Did you guys see that uh, Jordan Peterson did an interview with Piers Morgan? Why? Why he do this? Why you do this, Jordan? Why you do this? Uh, I have not watched the whole thing. I just watched a clip of it where Jordan Peterson starts crying. Hashtag uh, very, very embarrassing. People are mad at him for the tears. They should be. Like, don't cry. He shouldn't have cried. He should have been indignant. But here's the scenario. Uh, Olivia Wilde. Who's Olivia Wilde? Is she ugly? Olivia Munn used to be hot. Is Olivia Wilde? Oh, so it's this chick. Ugh! God, shadows are not your friend, woman. And don't get me wrong. Like, shadows are not my friend either because I have a nose that, like, if the light, if I have a downward-facing light, you can't even see my penis because my nose just casts a dark shadow over the entire earth below me. So she's in House, Tron, Legacy, Cowboys and Aliens, Incredible Burt Wonderstone, and the Lazarus Effect. Oh, what a great, what a great, uh, roster that is. So here's the here's the headline, and this is this is this is unfair. Jordan Peterson breaks down in tears when asked about Olivia Wilde, calling him a quote hero to the incel community, and he says, "Sure, why not?" Okay, first of all, here's the here's the reason this is a problem. Jordan Peterson should not feel bad about his reaction to the incel community. He should feel bad about crying in general, but his sentiment was, and his heart was in the right place. Let's watch it. Let's just fucking watch it. Rather than me try and explain it, let's watch it. Okay, here we go. Uh, the film director, Olivia Wilde, uh -huh. has a new movie out, which yeah. is, she says is based on you, this insane man, this pseudo intellectual hero to the incel community. Incel being these weirdo. Okay. So notice, look at Jordan's face, right? Olivia, Olivia Wilde's got a movie coming out, which is a shock. Um, and uh, it's talking about Jordan Peterson. It's not what Olivia Wilde said, in my opinion, that actually bothers him. It's what Piers Morgan says. Because this is going to get spun by the media who doesn't understand people or intentionally misunderstands people. But I'm something of a people guru, okay? Like, you, you come talk to me and I'll tell you your fetish or whatever. I'm something of a people person because I, I study people. I'm not a psychologist because psychologists are gay. Sorry, Jordan. You like the booty. But uh, but I, I just, I know what's going on here. He's not mad about what Olivia says. He's mad about what Pierce says. Here we go. Intellectual hero to the incel community. Incel being these weirdo loner men. Uh Look at his fucking face. Do you see? He was smiling one second ago. One second ago, he's smiling, smiling, like, okay, she made a pithy comment. But then Pierce says, these weirdo loner men. These weirdo loner men. And look at him. He knows already. Okay. You're going to be like this. You're going to be like this then. All right. Well, here we go. Because men who are loners are not weirdos. Okay? They're not fucking weird. They're just men. It's just men. And Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry that they haven't found the woman that they want to have sex with or that wants to have sex with them. Holy fuck, what a crime. What a crime to be a guy who women have turned down. What a crime to be a guy who's too timid to go up to talk to some woman. What a crime to be a guy who doesn't fit with society's version of what men should be. What a fucking crime to be the guy who turns off because there's so much goddamn risk in just walking up and saying hello. Hey, try it. Try it. If you've never done it before, go up, pull your balls up into your fucking throat, walk up to a woman and say hi. And if she even acknowledges your presence, 
my God, you've passed like 50% of those encounters. And if she doesn't berate you in the next sentence, then you've passed 80% of them. Good fucking Christ. Like, how dare these men not automatically have women consenting to fuck them? Jeez, what do they even do? Uh, well, I don't know, Piers. Maybe they're not a multi-millionaire broadcaster with a face that everybody recognizes. I'm sure you can go pull any three from the bar you want. But my God, not every guy has the confidence and not every guy has the lack of standards to do so. And I hate this categorization, this classification, because incel is different from monster. And I know it gets put on there for that, that fucking mass shooter up in Canada. That's where, if you guys don't remember, that's where incel became popularized for like the, the, well, incel means terrorist thing, but because that guy was an actual legit weirdo and a creep and a monster. Now, any guy who just isn't currently having sex at the time you're talking about him is a weirdo, but this is the fucking go, go to insult. It's the go to insult that people use on, on guys that they, that they just, like that aren't, uh, I don't know, Henry Cavill or whatever. So incel people call me incel all the time. I'm like, wait, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. I have a wife and a boatload of children. Like, good God. If I was an incel, my life would be less expensive, but, uh, but they, the, it's the go-to thing. And, and society has popularized. It has popularized this, uh, demeaning comment about men. And in particular, it has popularized the idea that it's uh, that virgin, like virgin shaming um, is okay. That that's like the right thing to do. And listen, bitches, it's okay for us to do it <laughs> when we're ripping someone. Um, but actually treating someone like trash because they're just, I don't know, not into it or not successful isn't really the right thing to do and it's fucking annoying the other thing women go to all the time we talk i talked about this a better bachelor um they go to dick size it's incel and you have a small penis that's it it's like that's that's the go-to it's like okay like why is emasculating someone why is that the popular thing and it's popular because social media platforms and everything they're all fine with it they're they're okay everybody it is socially acceptable to, to demean men based on sexuality. Like that is, unless they're gay, but it is, it is socially acceptable to demean heterosexual men on sexuality right now. So everybody does it. It's, it's a learned behavior. But look at Jordan Peterson's face here because this is, to me, really telling about what he thinks about that. Uh, who are uh, despicable in many ways. Is that you? Are you the intellectual hero to these people? Sure. Why not? You know, um, people have been after me for a long time by because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. Okay, just a brief thing. The man is a psychologist. It's his literal job to speak to disaffected people. Like, that's the whole purpose of his career is to do this. And the fact... The most offensive thing to them is the fact that he turns uh, he turned his individual counseling into general life advice. And you know what the crazy thing is? Jordan Peterson's crazy life advice is to stop being a stereotypical incel. Focus on you. Clean your clean up your room. Walk with your shoulders back and your head up. Be a confident person. Like, don't don't be this stereotype. Be be better for your own sake. Like, that's his advice. Everyone should love Jordan Peterson, curing incels left and right. Like, that's that's all he does, and he's demonized for it because they want men to be incels. They want men to be afraid and weak and meek and pathetic. That's what they want. You know, what a terrible thing to do that is. 
Stop crying. I thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. You made a mistake here, Jordan. Men cannot be marginalized. They're not allowed to. Society has decided that men can't be on the margins. They are the majority. They are the patriarchy. They have the power. There's no man on earth who can be in the margin, no matter what his status is. This is where you're making your mistake. You cannot speak to, for, on behalf of, or about men because they're not marginalized. They can't be. They can't be. But here, he, here he's crying. And this is... This is a little bit shameful. I got it. Look, I'm consistent. Don't cry in public ever. I, I get your sentiment, Jordan. I get that you're speaking on behalf of men, but please do us a fucking favor. Never, ever cry. Never, ever cry for incels or anyone else ever again. Please don't. It's making you emotional. Talk about it. Well, God, you know. It's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. And certainly many young men are in that category. And there it is. There it is. The source of the emotion is that this guy. So I, I do this on YouTube. I have a, I have a pretty okay sized channel. And uh, I talk to a lot of people and I get emails all the time. All the time. Hey, thanks. Like you have no idea what you did for me. Like you, you saved my marriage. You gave me confidence. You saved my job. You helped me quit my job and find a new career. I'm doing this. I get, I get those emails with regularity. Jordan Peterson is overtly giving advice to young men. He's writing books that young men are reading. Okay. This man is on a different level. Like I incidentally give some people some hope or help from time to time. This is not my mission. Like, I want to make people laugh and smile. That's it. This man does this. This is his profession. It's his life's work. I bet this motherfucker gets about a million emails an hour. You've helped me. I found a wife. I I've decided that uh, I'm going to work on me. I'm into self-improvement. Hey, Jordan, uh, when I started listening to you, I was 500 pounds. Now I'm, now I'm 220 pounds of muscle. I've been hitting the gym every single day and, uh, I I'm doing better in my career. You know, maybe I'll find a woman at some point, but I don't even care right now. Right now I'm out traveling, whatever. I mean, this guy probably gets just boatloads of these things and he knows what he's doing. He knows who he's helping. He hears it constantly. And what he hears from Piers Morgan and Olivia Wilde is every guy who wrote you a letter that said, thanks, Jordan, I didn't kill myself because of you should have instead killed himself. That's what Piers Morgan and Olivia Wilde have communicated to Jordan Peterson. And it's fucking sick. It is fucking sick sick and disgusting that that is the attitude that is not only allowed but is prevailing like i i have never in my life been suicidal um i have never had to deal with that uh i've been a nerd right like i've been a dork or whatever sure it's fantastic until I went to college and, uh, and, and then, you know, like some things kind of changed and I stopped caring about some things and started caring about others and kind of changed who I was. And, and, and that was, that was fine. It was like this progression of my life from one step to the next, but like, I've never been disaffected in the way that I encounter people who are disaffected. When I was at Matsuri, man, a guy, uh, came up to me and, um, he said, uh, this is, this is not on the incel side, but it's just, this is just what, what happens. And it, it was, uh, it was like after it's like Matsuri is closing. It's Sunday. I'm dead ass tired, by the way, because I mentioned this story. I was up all night the night before did not sleep. And this guy comes up to me. He's like, Hey, I uh, just wanted to, he, he'd come up to me, I think on Saturday as well, but kind of fuzzy. 
but he said, uh, oh yeah. Cause I think he wanted to meet lady rackets. Um, but he, he said, Hey, you know, just again, thank you so much. Cause my marriage was over. Uh, my wife said that she wanted a divorce and we were going to get divorced. And he said that you, you said he, he sent me a super chat and he said, you said, um, Hey man, divorce is a two way street. Tell her you, you're not ready for that yet and, and try it out. And he said, and we did, we did. And we got some counseling and we're still together. And, and he had, he, I met his kid, right. And his kid was there and he's like, Hey, uh, yeah, here's my kid. And, and it's like, imagine like, so you had two people who were missing each other. Uh, they weren't communicating now they are. And I don't know if they'll, you know, who knows how long it'll last, but there's a kid there and that, that divorce would, that's trauma, right? Uh, unending trauma. Any, any child of divorce knows it's a trauma you never quite get over. Um, and that, that may have happened again, like Jordan Peterson is dealing with that problem, worse problems at a level far beyond what I ever end up with. His people seeking him out for their problems. And he unrelentingly gives them advice on how to be better. And he's punished for it. He's punished for trying to get men out of that funk because the world doesn't want men out of that funk. And it's crazy because it's right out in the fucking open. And you get these casual insults, these, these incels. What does it mean? It's like, well, these men, they're, they don't know how to make themselves attractive to women who are very picky and good for them. Women, like, be picky. That's, that's your gift, man. Demand high standards from your men. Fair enough. But all these men who are alienated, it's like they're lonesome and, and, and they don't know what to do. And everyone piles abuse on them. When she said, because it's accepted because they're men. Lonesome women, like piling abuse on lonesome women. You know what happens when you pile abuse on lonesome women? Look at Andrew Tate. Look at Andrew Tate. I wouldn't even say that Andrew Tate was piling abuse on lonesome women. But look at what fucking happened to him for just talking about it. But it is fully, like, if I came on here and mocked incels all day, like, no one would bat an eye. Be fine. I mock everybody, so it's okay. By the way, you fucking virgins, get out there. Get your dicks wet. I don't know, like, what? <laughs> but look, man, uh, I, was, I was a virgin into my early 20s. Like, who, what am I going to do? Shame people for it? That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> It's become acceptable in society. Like, first of all, it's unacceptable in society to be a man who is after ass constantly. That's that's misogynistic. It's monstrous. It's very uh, it's very uh, patriarchal and 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 whatever. But you 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 have to be after ass constantly. But if you can't succeed, you're such a fucking loser <laughs> that you should probably be gay and murder yourself. Like, can you, that's, that's how it is. And everybody's just fucking okay with this. It's, it's wild. It's wild. And it's, you, you can't even question someone changing their gender, but my God, why, why wouldn't men want to like men who cannot attract women? Why the fuck wouldn't they want to change into women as a, as a, like, just as a basic thing go, Oh my God. If, if I'm a woman and an incel, I'm fucking empowered at least. It's so weird. It's so weird. That Olivia Wilde, it, it stung you, didn't it? I saw the oh, by that time, you know, that as far as as criti critiques go, that was kind of low level. I mean, once I got painted as Red Skull, you know, magical super Nazi, that was kind of the end of the insults. There's no place past that. So 
But when Olivia Wilde made those comments, the first thing I did was go look at the preview for a movie, which I quite liked. I thought I would go see that movie probably, and perhaps I will. It didn't really bother me. My, my family and I talked about it right away, and we were able to respond to it with some degree of humor. See, this, this is the weird thing for me. Like, okay, so someone, someone said something about you online, and like you and your family talked about it? Like, uh, oh, oh, I guess I missed that note. <laughs> Like people say something about me, I just say fuck you. <laughs> but I guess that's the difference between us two. Which then people completely misunderstood. I said I hope that, you know, that if I had to be played by someone, I think it's Chris Wilde, is mm. that he's a very good looking man, and so that seems all right, you know. And then I said something like, I hope he gets my my uh fashion style choice right when he <laughs> plays me. And it was a joke. All that was a joke. I mean, you've been so controlled today, and yet in that brief moment, you got very emotional. Why? It's really something to see. He's constantly crying again. How many people are dying for a lack of an encouraging word? Mm. Okay, so I think uh, the subtext here, I think the subtext here, and I can speak from some experience. Uh, I can speak with some experience. Here, let me let me quickly answer this. Uh, Mr. Bubble says, does Ricada Law realize that despite how Jordan B. Peters, great Jordan B. B. Peterson's ideas generally are, he's not that great. He's pro being a cuck or being Dan Crenshaw, so a cuck. <laughs> First of all, no. I've no idea. I don't care though. Like I, I'm not here to criticize his work, but like what he does is he reaches, he reaches disaffected young men. Like I'm like, he, he's out there doing that. That's his, that's his job. I don't care. Like if people criticize the quality of his work or advice, great, but God damn. A lot, of, a lot of guys really seem to like it and be into it, and it's helped a lot of people. So, I mean, whatever the, whatever like where his values may clash with mine, and uh, I'm sure they do at some parts, it, it doesn't really matter in the context of this discussion, though, because he's being labeled as, as being this, this monster that, uh, that talks to this verboten class. And that's, that's the thing that's insane. Like, cause it doesn't matter that it's Jordan Peterson. Anybody, anybody who offers a hand to the incel is not acceptable. Whether it's him, whether it's, it, it could be fucking anybody on, on earth who does it. That would be the unacceptable thing. No, sorry. These people are off limits. But getting back to this, this moment where Jordan B. Peters, his tears are welling up in his eyes again like a woman. But, but, he said, uh, he said, imagine like the, the amount of death because of a lack of a kind word. Again, speaking from experience, I get suicide notes from people. I get people saying, they're going to end it. And sometimes I see him and try and like trying to respond and I can other times I don't even see him until later. Uh, and, and, and 90% of the time you don't know. Right. But I'm sorry. But my, my whole show is about jokes and levity and fun. And when you find out that there's someone out there who's despite like enjoying your content, their life is so incapable of fun that they're going to just die. Like they'll just kill themselves. And there's nothing you can fucking do about it. Cause like maybe you message them, maybe they see it. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's already done by the time you get the message. You'll, you'll never know unless they respond. And again, I bet Jordan Peterson has read a hundred times the amount of suicide notes that I have. 
I bet I, I, it may be more. It may be a thousand times, 2000 times. I don't know. But what I know is every one that I read breaks my fucking soul. What's left of it. Because I go, God, you know, my life's pretty sweet. And here's, here's this, here's this guy out there whose life isn't. And it's so bad that he'd rather not be than be. And there's nothing I can do. Like there's no amount of thing I can give him or help him with. But I bet Jordan Peterson reads notes from people who are like, the world hates me. Everybody fucking hates me. I'm just a piece of shit loser. I sit in my room. Everybody tells me I'm a loser. If I talk to a woman, I get maced or whatever. Because X, Y, Z. My hair is stupid. I'm overweight. I have acne. Uh, I have a speech impediment. I'm just really fucking nervous and I sweat a lot. Any number of things that these people have no control over. And it's literally, if I walk up to someone, they go the other way. So I guess I'll go the other way and just fucking die then. I bet Jordan Peterson has read a thousand of those messages. And that's what he's thinking about right now. Like, Jesus Christ. And nobody fucking cares. There's no advocacy groups out there. When you do an advocacy group, by the way, for incel men, if you were to try and just try and do an advocacy group for men, actually just try and open a men's homeless or abuse shelter. Just try it in your city. See how it goes for you. See if you get any funding or help or permission to do any of it. Good fucking luck. For whatever reason, right now, men are the unprotected class. Is fully okay to shit all over them. Now, my advice to men is to stop fucking worrying about all of that shit. Focus on you. Go to the gym. Get some more education. Learn a trade. Find a hobby. Get away from the fucking nonsense. Get off of social media for a bit. Focus on you because that, that's all you can do. Make yourself better for you, not for anybody else. And as you get better for you and get more confident for you, you'll be better for everybody else as a natural product. Like that's my advice for it. But it doesn't change the fact that that doesn't fucking mean anything if you're overwhelmed with depression about how much of a piece of garbage you are that can be cast off by everybody. Like, I can't change that feeling. I can only hope that I can make them feel better about themselves since no one else is bothering to feel better about them. And I bet he feels the same fucking way. I bet this guy knows off the top of his head of five or six people, probably in the past six months that have killed themselves and sent him their last message. And how easy it is to provide that if you're careful, you know, give credit. where. So what he, what he said, since I paused it for a long time was the thing that, that would, that would keep, keep these guys from darkness is one kind word. And then he followed it with, and how easy it is to give that if you're careful, right? If you're just, if you're just careful, give them, uh, here we go. Where credit is due. Give them credit where credit is due. And to say. You're a net force for good if you want to be. Do you believe you're a net force for good? Net? Yes. In all the details? Probably not. You know, no one's perfect. So people make their mistakes as they stumble uphill. We fucking hope we make our mistakes as we stumble uphill. Not everybody does, of course. But I think Jordan Peterson, like, again, crying aside, Jordan, uh, I think he tries to be a good guy. Maybe that's his problem is he tries to be too good. I think... And and this is this is I think a lot of the criticisms I see of Jordan Peterson coming from people on, on like sort of my perspective, and I'm not criticizing him or whatever, but I, I think people want him to be more of a pit fighter than he is. But Jordan was never a pit fighter. 
Jordan's a Canadian. The guy's barely even a functional human. And the Canadians in the chat can't be offended by that because they know they know that like that you start that's like being born without an arm or whatever. Like you're you're born at a hindrance because you're Canadian. Your culture is fucking suffocating to you. But Jordan's a Jordan's a Canadian who uh who is in like kind of a this weird profession of of empathy and sympathy and um which is doubly bad for a Canadian. They shouldn't do that ever. And and he's got to he's just someone said like he had to apologize for making fun of incels before. Like I think Karen Strawn uh had had said, Hey, you need to you need to not do this, like not not mock these disaffected men or something. And he did. And and he probably started to realize like how easy it was to just make fun of people, like to just pile on. But then he's like, oh my God, what am I doing? Right. Cause again, his profession and his his uh his whole like you know persona of I, I probably need to understand and empathize rather than than berate. Like I'm a berater, but Jordan Peterson's not. Like his his whole purpose is empathize, understand, and build people. And uh so so he's done that. But that's that wasn't his natural condition. He didn't ask to be a warrior for these people. He didn't ask to be any, like, he's just a guy who's like, oh, hey, I, I have this, I have some rules that if people kind of follow these fucking rules, maybe their lives will improve a little bit. I, I see some consistency as I'm doing therapy here. And he's destroyed for it constantly, constantly maligned, attacked, um, called the worst stuff, like, I mean, he's got painted as Red Skull. He's like, oh, digital Nazi, that's pretty bad. Like, oh, okay, like, I guess it's kind of bad, but, like, it's not, it, like, doesn't bother me, but clearly, like, being painted as a comic supervillain Nazi bothered him because it's not who he is. It's just a humble Canadian mind merchant. Jordan's been a fascinating interview. Thank you very much. You've, Thank you. You've Okay, that's it. Now they're going to talk about his book. So I was already at the end. Uh, it was just this moment for Jordan Peterson. Of course, that's the one. That's the one getting the play. It's the one getting the views, or whatever. And um, I haven't watched the rest of the interview. I might try to tomorrow if I have time. I don't. I don't know if I will. But fuck me. <laughs> his entire life is devoted to rarely do you get someone whose entire life is devoted to try and make other people's lives better get just fucking destroyed constantly by by the by the public but uh damn damn it it's it's just a reminder that Right now, for whatever reason, men are the easiest target on earth. They're in it's open season. They're in the barrel that says, please fucking shoot me. And um, Piers Morgan is is right on board with it. He's right on board with it. And I guess props to him on the interview, on the interview skill there of eliciting that response from Jordan Peterson. Oh my goodness. Uh, the yawns of, of getting that response out of him. And saying, hey, uh, and then recognizing, like, hey, we've gone this whole interview. You've been very contained, but this this thing got to you. So tell me about it. Like, that's that's why Piers Morgan's on TV. It's why he's stuck around, because he he has some interview skill. But, but fuck me, like, explore that theme. It's way more important than, I guarantee, anything else they've talked about. And I wish, like, sometimes Piers, like, he's 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 a... Brit Bong, it's not his fault. Kind of is. But sometimes Piers comes in with, with a couple of okay takes on occasion. And he wasn't averse to making fun of people when he was on like America's Got Talent and stuff. Like he was supposed to be the Simon Cowell sort of guy, like come in and be the harsh judge. He he was fine with it, but it's like, dude, like explore what's going on, man. But it's against the script.
it's against the script of what's acceptable right now. What's acceptable right now is the mockery and degradation of men. And I mean, I guess, I don't know. Uh, what do you do? I'm, I'm all for mocking people. Uh, absolutely. But at the same time, like, let's realize that there's a difference between mockery and, um, hate, right? Like there, there is a difference between mockery and hate and you're free to hate anybody you want, but realize what that hatred actually is and what it does. And when all of society is given permission to hate a particular group, but not hate anybody else. And this is the trick that's marginalization. That's when you create a lower class. Because if you can hate everybody, then it doesn't matter who you hate. But if you're allowed to only hate one person because the majority deems that so, then that person has become marginalized. So pour out an art bag of Balmor at the Freud. The spirits flow as the one suit get unemployed. So pour out a glass for the team post on Twitter as we hear us planning tonight.